Good morning, Brian Phillips, Worcester County Public Schools Coordinator of Instruction. Angela Paris, Worcester County Public Schools Coordinator. Good morning, Renee Cooper, uh, MBE Compliance Manager, U.S. Wind. Dave Wilson, Maryland Development Manager for U.S. Wind. Uh, Drew O'Neill, HR Generalist for the Corporate Office at Blue Water Development. Uh, Stephanie Lewis, uh, Human Resources at uh, Frontier Town. Christy Gordon, Director of the Marvel Discovery Museum. Uh, Christine Lauser, Director of Human Resources for TKO Hospitality. That includes the Hyatt Place in Ocean City and the Hotel Monte Carlo Group. Suzanne Jackson, Ocean City, Maryland. Jolly Roger Amusement Park, Sprashers French Fries, Days Inn, Howard Johnson. Linda Oliver, HR for Ocean Dabs. Uh, Mark Heim, Assistant Manager of Pokemon River State Park. Hello everyone, Jessica Bauer, Director of Marketing for Trevor Rise in Ocean City. We'll kick to this table first and then we'll get back to you. Hi, I'm Bob Zimbaroff. Uh, I work for the Maryland Professional Training Program, part of the Maryland Department of Labor, and you will hear more from me later. Thanks for being here. Good morning, I'm Natasha Douglas, Director of Participant Services with Google Industries of the Chesapeake. Hi, Susan Jones, the director of the Ocean City Hotel Motel Restaurant Association. Carrie Cleaver, the Maryland Food Bank Food Market Program. I'm Mindy Burgoyne with the Maryland Department of Commerce. Michelle Briatt, I'm with Innovation. Brianna Dix, advertising destination marketing specialist for Maryland's Coast. Thanks for being here. I'm Michelle Burke, I'm business development and retention. Thanks for being here. Hello, everybody. My name is Mika Sherrill. I work for Longshore Walk Walking Alliance in South America. And I'm Christina Shedvine. I work for Warwick Community College. I'm the Director of Banking Education and Workforce Development and Partnerships. Lori Lee, I'm here representing Title V Health System here on the Eastern Shore. Hi, I'm Bonnie Yang. I'm from the Lower Shore Workforce <laughs> Alliance, and I'm in the Business Services Department. 
Hi everyone, I'm Paul Silberquick for Community College, Dean for Occupational and Emerging Technologies. Good morning, Kara Fashazo, over at Community College, Dean Community Education Director <coughs> on Green Initiatives. Hi everyone, I'm Ruth Baker, Dean of Continuing Education and Workforce Development at Warwick Community College. Good uh, morning, Heather Veraldez, Community Foundation of the Eastern Shores Program Director. Good morning and thanks for coming. I'm Stacy Morton, the Human Resources Director for Worcester County Government. My name is Kevin Ferguson. I'm a front of the house manager for the Tossing Group. I'm Ali Hurry. I'm also a front of the house manager for the Tossing Group. Mike Gershenfeld, I'm the chief operating officer for the Tossing Group. Cole Tossing. Well represented today. Great to see you. Mark Miller, front house manager, Tossing Group. Joe Bianca, big dumb cook, Tossing Group. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rush Daly, Tossing Group beverage director. Heather Harris, Director of Facilities. Then we have a guest in here. Hi. <laughs> Alicia Dennis, I work for the Department of Labor and Workforce Development inside of Murphy Johnson. And we're thrilled to have our county administrator here. Briefly. Yes. Yes. He's a Weston busy gentleman. Young, yeah, Weston Young, Chief Administrative Officer for Worcester County. And thank you all for attending. And my absence doesn't mean I don't want to be here. I've got a busy schedule today. So thank you all. All right, so we'll go ahead and introduce uh, Larissa. And Larissa is the Director of Economic Development for the Town of Snow Hill. So as you drove in here, hopefully you got to appreciate it and maybe you can head out, walk around, do a little shopping, have a little lunch afterwards. So thank you, Larissa. Good morning. Thank you for coming to Snow Hill and, and to, to this presentation today. Um, it's great to see such a powerhouse of, of stakeholders from across Worcester County and, and the region. So uh, with that said, I know we have a tight schedule. I'm going to jump right in. Um, I'm going to introduce all of the presenters. Um, and then if you guys could just kind of keep an eye on me, I've got cards for your one minute, 30 second, and then once the timer goes off, um, it'll be like a little chime. Try to turn the volume down so it's not quite as obnoxious, but um, you guys have 10 minutes. So our first presenter today is Alicia Dennis. She's from the Maryland Department of Labor and she is the Regional Business Solutions Consultant. Please welcome Alicia. Welcome again, I am Business Solutions Consultant for the Department of Labor, Division of Workforce Development. And this morning, I'm just gonna give you a, a 50, uh, like a 30,000 foot view of the services that we do provide to our business customers. So without further ado, we're gonna speak briefly about the Maryland Workforce Exchange, also recruitment and job fairs and our role and how we have been trying to connect uh, the job seekers and businesses. And also, we're going to talk about business incentives and retention initiatives that are kind of hot right now. So, the first step in order for you to have access to the services that we provide is through registration in our Maryland Workforce Exchange. It is a web-based system, and it, based, it will allow you to post your jobs. Of course, um, I'd like to say prepaid services because you've already paid for it uh, via tax dollars versus free services but it is a prepaid service you can post your job orders you can search for candidates that are have registered with us including those that are unemployed those who are employed um, students so this is our, our web-based system you can access our oh, is this time? you can access our website here our landing page we also have an app so you can just go to your Google Play and you can just search for the um, MWE jobs on your Google or your apps, um, your Google Play, your iTunes, Apple iTunes. So for employers, you'll just basically take 12 minutes for the registration process, just to get your information, just classifying your business, um, your FBIN number, and just some basic information for us to, um, to just for you, Peter, you, excuse me, just for you to log in and register. It takes about 12 minutes. And then after you have registered, you will have access to these services, and I just want to point out the quick menu. So the quick menu, that's where you'll manage your job posts. So any job order that you want to post, you can just manage it there. The cool thing is that once your job order is in the system, then if you want to refresh that later on, say you hire for that same role, say six months later, 
it's going to still be in that system and you can just kind of refresh and renew that so you don't have to consistently um, post those jobs in the system. Also candidate searches. So again, we have a house of data, we house a database of job seekers in our system. You actually have an, um, access to filter those based on their resume. So some, most of them have resumes in the system. A lot of them put their job skills in the system and you have access to actually filter based on, the, if, for example, if you're hiring for an accountant, just type in keyword accountant in the area in which you wanna locate those job seekers and it'll populate in the system. We also have additional um, employer services this database houses a lot of information. So anywhere from HR information, ergonomics, you know, to make sure that your um, employers, your, I'm sorry, excuse me, your employees have um, those services there. This is a bigger screen of that for those that can see. Human resource information, again, making sure that you have a drug-free work environment. So this is just a plethora of resources that is available. We understand though that businesses are extremely busy. So with that being said, you do have myself and you do have local business representatives that I will um, put up on the screen that will are basically you just contact us and then let us know what you're looking to do. We'll make sure that you're registered, make sure that you're in good standing um, with your taxes through the Maryland bin, uh, Business Entity Search. And then once those do check the boxes, <coughs> um, provide your information, we'll put in your job order for you, we'll register for you. So we are there to help you to basically create and help manage your database because we know that you're extremely busy. All right, so next is recruitment and job fairs. <coughs> so especially during the pandemic, one of the things that we have been doing are virtual job fairs, trying to connect those dislocated job seekers to the businesses that we're still hiring. We also now, since the post pandemic, we have been doing in-person job fairs as well. We have been receiving the same um, across the board with all industries. We have lots of businesses that are looking for candidates. We're still trying to reel in those job seekers. So we're still, we have been facing the same challenges even when we have been holding recruitment events. But nonetheless, we still create those in, um, those environments so that there is um, a potential connection between the job and also the potential job seeker. So American Job Centers, we have one location. <coughs> it's located right across from Warwick Community College. We cover all three counties, Wacomico, Worcester, and Somerset County. Um, we have a partner here that's gonna talk about how we kind of diverge into other remote areas of the um, county as well. And for the Upper Shore, there are five locations. And locally, this would be your Maryland Labor Lower Shore Workforce Team. So Jorge De, um, De Jesus, he's our business development representative. So if you call the American Job Center and you want to speak with um, employ someone in employer services, he would most likely be the contact person, even though anyone can assist you. Christina Williams, we do have a local veterans employment representative. And so she helps connect those veterans to opportunities as well. And we have worked with a couple of um, businesses that are um, veteran friendly here in Worcester County. Also, Tawanda Redding, she's our re-entry coordinator. So she connects those who are coming out of um, institutions and she is basically making sure they have their supportive services, make sure they have everything that they need, getting cleaned up, interview, all the skills that they need to go ahead and transition to employment. So she's there, that middle person, and she is doing an amazing job. She already has a success and she just started with us, um, I believe within the last year. <coughs> And then regionally, you'll have myself, and then you'll hear from Bob, who is also their regional apprenticeship training navigator. So really briefly, we do help with your recruiting needs. We help to screen, we help to um, advertise, screen, recruit through our Maryland Workforce Exchange. We have a, a system of partners, so whenever you have a post, we disseminate that through our partners. We also have a Maryland um, State Job Board that, you know, depending on how wide you're trying to cast your net, you could also post with us there. And through our partners, you can also, we also help provide ready, uh, training readiness, and you'll hear more about that through our partners today. And also any supportive services that our job seekers need, we basically um, provide that service and connect those dots. So let's move on to incentives and retention initiatives. The big one that I wanna talk about as far as on-the-job training and um, income of worker training is our Maryland Business Works. It really helps with retention. So. Uh, the thing about, um, that I love about this program is that it is basically supports your employee productivity, it upgrades the skills of your current employees. So say you have um, vacancies in your establishments right now, and the only thing that's holding them back is a certification. Then through Maryland Business Works, based on um, if that certification is portable and is credentialed, 
and it's within about six months of training, you can actually contact me, apply for the Maryland Business Works. We'll verify um, the, the information, your training information that we'll pull from. Just to, I'll help you with your application and fill that out, which is very simple. And then if you are approved, then you get a 50% reimbursement on that training cost. So um, this is for businesses that are 500 um, and under. It's also for nonprofits as well. So just remember that when, I'm sorry, I didn't know this was time. Just remember that when you're thinking about training, a certification, something that's portable, something that's for entry level or for mid-level workers, then I think, let me contact Alicia because I want to see if this could qualify so I can get at least a 50% reimbursement. Now we're going to move on to the Direct Care Workforce Innovation Program. So the program is, I just got my cheat sheet here, just to stay on track. So it provides matching grants and it basically creates and expands on applying successful recruitment and retention strategies strategies that address the range of potential barriers to increasing the number and availability of direct care workers across Maryland. I just wanted a one paragraph liner that kind of said the gist of this program. So the entities that are eligible to apply for the program, nonprofits, labor organizations, direct care employees, and entities with shared labor management oversight, and additionally has to have an established record of recruiting and providing training to direct care workers or established training program and consultation with an organization with an established record of providing training with direct care workers. Okay. And also this gives, I'm just going to really briefly let you know what support, what supportive services are covered. So driver's license, transportation assistance, uniforms, child or dependent care, uniform initiative, clothing for interviews and job fairs, and other supportive services. And so there is a call for release for post, um, there was a call for release a release, the Department of Labor released a call for proposals on October 11th, and the um, applications will be due December the 30th. So I have more information if you want to learn about that. And then jobs that build initiative. So this provides an opportunity for employers, construction employers, uh, impacted by COVID-19 to pursue, pursue innovative, innovative solutions to the most pressing workforce no challenges. You're making me nervous at that time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I do have a flyer on the table. So if you're interested in that, then it also provides those um, supportive services for transportation, housing, childcare, so forth and so on. So we can talk to me more after that. Their eligibility, that's on the flyer as well. And I'm your contact. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Angela Paris from Worcester County Public Schools. I'm the coordinator of instruction. And um, we have two programs in Worcester County that are specific to employment. The first one is work-based learning, and the second is summer youth employment. Uh, with summer youth employment, that does expand in some programs to be year-long employment for our workers. Under work-based learning, we have seven different courses that are specific to that in our course catalog across all four of our high schools. Uh, for my, um, within my work, I'm responsible directly for employment experience and then Dr. Phillips with her some others that he'll talk about. For summer youth employment, we have a total of three programs. Um, the, again, the one that I'm responsible directly for is the career internship program. I see some of you here in the room today that employ some of our students. For employment experience, this is school-based. These are students that are their prerequisite for this are either juniors or seniors, and they've either taken a career prep class prior, and then during their junior or senior year, they are out in the field working. They're either working during the um, beginning of the school day or in the afternoon or in the evening or on the weekends, and they receive credit for that work. 
all of this work that they have, they have um, found their employers and then they have evaluations and their work goes back to their job coach. These are some of the numbers for the past seven years. Our student work, these are our students during our school year that are out at work. Last year we had 73 students that were out and it's about the same back from 2016, we have built that capacity. For the summer employment program, this is specific students that we recruit. We start with freshmen and we try to build that, um, those cohort of students that work with us are, are their freshman year, their sophomore year, and their junior year. They work for five weeks and it's paid. For example, this summer, most of our students earned up to $2,500. Some of the employers, next slide, slide please. Some of the employers for this were here, Pocomoke State Park, the Department of Natural Resources, um, Lusby's Appliances, they're throughout the county. And again, for the past eight years, you can see where our numbers were. Of course, during fiscal year um, 21, which was the summer of 2022, our numbers were less because of COVID, but we've built that capacity back to 48. Any questions? Hello everyone, I'm Brian Phillips. Um, I'm a coordinator of instruction for many different areas, as you can see here, um, but basically I'm connected to the workforce and work-based learning through our Worcester Technical High School, the career and tech um, building for Worcester County Public Schools. We are governed at, uh, under the school system by Maryland Blueprint for Maryland, and that starts um, now. We're in the planning phases of implementing um, this legislation into the school system and everything that it tasks us with, and it is connected to the workforce. And one of the main things that you will be interested to know is that the school system has to, uh, by 2030, have all students either completing an industry credential, which uh, students will get through one of our programs at uh, Worcester Technical High School, and then either uh, an industry, earned an industry credential or connected to a youth apprenticeship program. So they can be separate um, or they can be together. And then they, or if they don't go that pathway, if they're thinking more of a college pathway, they'll have to complete an upper level um, college prep or equivalent course, which would be either dual enrollment or an AP course. So that is basically um, spearheading the school system to pursue more workforce development opportunities for our students. And um, I'll be working closely with Bob Zimberoff for youth apprenticeships to expand those opportunities. We're in a really good place here in Worcester already. Um, we have some youth apprenticeships already started, and I feel like our high school is really uh, poising students to earn industry credentials as it is, but my job is to continue to expand all of those opportunities um, under Blueprint for Maryland. So I'm not gonna steal too much of Bob's <laughs> thunder over there, because I know he's following Thank us. You. Um, <laughs> But youth apprenticeships are gonna be uh, a new window that at least here in Worcester, we haven't explored a whole lot with in years prior. We do have some approved youth apprenticeships already, Seaside Plumbing, Atlantic Tractor, our approved youth, youth apprenticeships. If you aren't familiar with what an apprenticeship is, uh, Bob's gonna to talk to you a little bit about that in a minute, but youth apprenticeships are an opportunity for students to apprentice while they're still in high school. So pretty much that means a two and a half hour window for our students. Our students are still required to go to school. They still have to take a math every year, for example. Um, they still need to take an English every year. So they will have a window of time in their schedule where they can go out and participate in apprenticeships. And those are paid opportunities that we hope will continue into employment opportunities after they graduate. They are programs of study, meaning that if they complete a youth apprenticeship, they do not have to complete another um, completer program. Every high schooler has to have a completer program without getting into too much detail. The good news is that the youth apprenticeship serves as that completer program. So it opens another pathway towards two different things. One, getting what I need to get my diploma, and then also securing some employment and getting paid along the way. It's not easy. It's 450 hours of work experience. So it does take a chunk of time out of high schooler schedules. And it also it requires a 120 hour related instruction piece, which will in part be using Worcester Technical High School for, but then also using the employer for that as well. Uh, next slide. Brian, there you go. 
So we already have work-based learning. This is something that's been around much longer than youth apprenticeship has. Um, Angela spoke a little bit about it. Work-based learning is generally connected to our CTE programs. So for example, if a student completes our electrical program in their junior year or even in their sophomore year, um, the following year in school, they can go out with an employer and complete work-based learning. They'll get paid with that employer and it gives them a chance to continue to um, perfect their trade or their craft. This may not result in uh, continued employment as we hope that the youth apprenticeships would result in either a full apprenticeship or um, continued employment with the employer. It could just be temporary that they're doing it while they finish up high school. Uh, it's also limited in that there is no requirement for 450 hours or 120 hours of related instruction. Typically they complete the program of study and then go directly out into that field for work-based learning. So slightly different. Um, what you all need to know is that we as the school system seek to partner with employers for all of these workforce development opportunities. So if you take away anything from what we've said, there's a variety of different ways that students, while they're in a public school system, go out to the workforce. Some of them are more rigorous, so to speak, than others. They put them on different pathways towards employment. Um, so keep all of that in the back of your mind and get in touch with Angela or myself in order to broaden um, your opportunities with students who are currently in school because we would be happy to continue to contribute to the workforce while students are in high school. As long as it pairs into their schedule and it connects them as a pathway to employment, we're open to it. Any questions for Angela or I? I just wanna point out for this part here, for this work-based learning that I had spoken of, these are just the students that are out on my employment <coughs> experience. So the students that are out on CTE work study and particularly from the Worcester Technical High School, the numbers are much different. So this is just for one particular program out of the seven. Last year, 53% of high schoolers participated in some type of work um, learning employment experience of some kind, whether it was work-based learning or through one of Angela's many programs. So we already have um, a, a high schoolers that are alive and well in the workforce. They, they really do contribute to the workforce, but we continue to expand those opportunities, especially through the apprenticeship. If you got hers, here's mine. 50 30, right? 632 50 30 is my direct line, or my email address is there. We just had a question if we could get um, everybody's contact information to send them Yes, yeah. sorry, we will be sending that all out to everyone that registered, and we're also gonna actually, yeah, we, um, this is <laughs> <laughs> <Speaking> of, <laughs> um, and maybe we can use our new technology to scan the cards. We actually have some really nice giveaways from some of our local businesses throughout the county, so if you could, while we're transitioning, just pass this around, stick your business card in here, and then we're gonna do some drawings at the end. So while everybody is getting their business cards in the bucket, I'd like to introduce uh, Bob Zimbaroff from the Maryland Department of Labor. He's the Eastern Shore Apprenticeship Navigator. Hey everybody, uh, again, Bob Zimbaroff, uh, an idea of where I come from. Uh, so I work for the Maryland Department of Labor, that's uh, in the Division of Workforce Development and Adult Learning, and then I work for the Maryland Apprenticeship and Training Program. I am the Eastern Shore Navigator. 
Uh, I live in Caroline County near Preston, Maryland. Uh, I work from borrowed space in Denton and Easton, uh, but I'm very fortunate to have a state vehicle and I drive a lot. So if any of you are interested in following up with me, I'm always looking for excuses to come to Worcester County. Um, let me virtually talk over the phone, but ideally meet face to face on what I'm going to discuss today. So uh, the reason I don't have slides is because I am here to talk about two different programs that are meant to synergize with each other. And if I were to get into the slides, I'd be lucky to get halfway through one of them. Um, so I work in adult apprenticeship, uh, which we also call registered apprenticeship or RA for short, uh, and also youth apprenticeship, which you heard a little bit about already, um, YA for short. Um, and let me say, before coming here, uh, I'm very fortunate to have toured uh, Worcester Tech just up the road. And honest to goodness, uh, working in workforce development uh, with a background in journalism as a business editor uh, covering the Midshore, having seen a lot of workforce development kind of facilities, both adult and kids, I am very impressed with Worcester Tech. Um, to be placing 53% of their kids into jobs while they're still in high school. I can say with near certainty that's probably the best number on the shore for the sake of getting kids into jobs. So I, I told Brian that I would love to take that facility, lift it up in the air, and put it in the county where I live for my kids um, to drink. Um, so adult apprenticeship, very briefly is an opportunity to earn while you learn for the employees. Uh, it is, in all odds, going to be a full-time job from day one, a paid opportunity. Um, there are exceptions to that rule. But um, there is also an education tied to it. <coughs> Anyone who completes an adult apprenticeship program is going to get a certificate from the Maryland Department of Labor that says they are fully qualified to do that job. It is very much like a college education for a specific career. So if you are in a position to grow your own, where you can take someone with very little to no skills, somehow tie an education to it, uh, and it's a job that demands some sort of credential, uh, even if it's an in-house credential that comes right from you, it's worth talking about adult apprenticeship. Uh, it has to be at least one year long. Um, there are traditional models uh, for our traditional trades, which are generally construction, plumbing, HVAC, electrical, uh, that are very well defined. Uh, those are all four year programs with four years of education. But we are branching every day into new careers and new opportunities. Uh, for instance, we're really, uh, a lot of folks in the automotive industry are desperate for automotive techs. There's an automotive certification there. There's a need for education. Mr. Tech has a fantastic uh, auto, I'm going to call it a laboratory, that's an auto shop, um, you know, for instance. Um, so, you know, a lot of businesses are already doing this. They have some sort of inside credentials, some sort of inside training system. It doesn't necessarily have to be school, the education piece. It could be online modules at YouTube. Uh, it could be you know, something you're already doing in your corporation that you think of as training, but could be considered an educational portion of it. They're sitting in a room like this for two hours a day, learning something to go out and do it in the job. There's a chance adult apprenticeship could work for you. The other big component of it is a progressive wage. Now there's more to it, but uh, part of formalizing a registered apprenticeship program is you can bring someone with very little skills again, um, bring them in at an entry level wage because they don't know the job, they don't know what they're doing, they're not fully qualified. You get them qualified, somewhere in there you give them a raise for getting better at the job. And then they get one more raise when they complete. So really two raises. So if you can justify a year worth of full-time work, um, an educational piece to it, and you know, you have the ability to upscale them internally, we should, I'd be glad to talk to you to see if we can make apprenticeship work for you. Um, so that's adult apprenticeship in a nutshell. Youth apprenticeship is new to Maryland. It's only been around since 2016. 
Ideally, it's going to synergize and lead right into an adult apprenticeship, but it doesn't have to. But it's modeled after adult apprenticeship in that you're gonna earn while you learn. Juniors and seniors in high school are eligible. That's 16 to 18 year olds. Um, it's a public school system thing. We're not working with private schools. Uh, and the work I do with youth apprenticeship is, is front-loaded administratively. Now, I'm always here to take a phone call. I'm always here to help. I want to make this successful. I want to hear success stories. But it's primarily a relationship between the school system and the employer. My job is to vet the employer, make sure that they're safe. It's not like an OSHA inspection, not by any means. In fact, Brian can tell you, um, I just, uh, the reason I was at Worcester Tech is because they're in, for a couple of their jobs are serving as both the educator and the employer. So I had to screen them like I would any other employer. I do a site visit. What I'm really looking at is that the job is safe and that it's not a dead end job. Now, to sign up as what we call a youth apprenticeship eligible employer, you do not have to hire anyone. We're opening doors. Um, we also understand that in a lot of cases, this could be a first time job for a high schooler. You're taking a risk. There are no guarantees. So I'm, when, you know, when I'm getting to know a new employer, getting to see if we're gonna move forward with, with you know, getting you approved, you know, first and foremost, I want to make sure it's not a dead end job, that there is potential for a full time job, something self sustaining, something where someone can support themselves on the back end of it, even if it's not guaranteed. So um, we think of it as the minor leagues for adult apprenticeship. It's generally easier. The application process all in, you know, time and effort should only take two, maybe three hours. And we're talking in like 20, 30 minute chunks. 20, 30 minutes to apply, 20, 30 minutes to talk to me, you know, get a feel for what the job is, 20 minutes, 30 minutes for the site visit, and then 20, 30 minutes to work with Brian or folks like Brian in other school systems to see what the education looks like. On the Eastern Shore, nine times out of 10, um, the education comes from the high schools, but it doesn't have to. Um, some exceptions. Um, some jobs require an OSHA 10 or an OSHA 30 safety training. Um, you are blessed in that in some cases, Worcester Tech offers that. Um, but that counts as education. Um, anything that leads to a credential or certificate. Um, I, I always can't remember if it's serve safe or safe serve, you know, in culinary. <laughs> that, that counts as education. Um, you know, your healthcare trades, CNA, GNA, LPN, RN, that education is easy to see. So my job is to, again, you know, there's an application that's available online. It should only take 20 minutes, um, making sure it's not a dead end job, making sure the school says, yes, we want to work with you, making sure you say, yes, we want to work with the school. And then I bring it before the Maryland Apprenticeship Training Council, which is the body that approves all things apprenticeship. And now that door is open and it's up to you to work with your Brian's of the world to make it work. Um, registered apprenticeship to get involved does require some heavy lifting. Typically takes about two or three months. Uh, but some of that is because uh, the Maryland Apprenticeship Training Council only meets two months. Youth apprenticeship, again, about two and a half hours effort. Um, and the application is available online, simple to fill out. And um, what not to do is don't put a seasonal job in there. We got an application for pool food runner uh, that clearly stated on the application it was a summer job. That's not gonna work. But we went to that business and said, look, that this was a resort, not in Worcester County. You offer all sorts of application, you know, occupations here. We know you're hiring all the time. Can you make this work? They said, yes, as long as they do, you know, fulfill the hours we need for Pool Food Runner. All of our employees are welcome to cross train, work in other portions. So we said, okay, let's get them some front of the house. Let's get them some housekeeping. Let's get them um, some other things at the resort. They filled out a new application. We got them approved. 
Um, so I, you will get my business. Oh, stop. Business cards are on the table. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Sharon with the Lower Shore Workforce Alliance. She is the American Job Center Navigator. Please welcome Mika. Can someone um, go and speak for me on my behalf? And I got picked, so I'm here. Bear with me. Okay. So I have some of Bob's presentation in mind as well, so that I can just focus on a couple of things. I don't know his presentation, um, so um, I'm going to just go for it. Okay. So we're going to start by saying, what do we do at the American Job Center? So first of all. Um, I'm the American Job Center Navigator, and one of my responsibilities is inside the American Job Center <coughs> is to make sure that everyone is moving around in the facility and receiving all the services that they can possibly receive and get assistance from at that time so that they don't just go in to just apply for a job and just walk out or do I apply for food stamps or tax assistance, there is someone to actually just walk them through this process with them, just make them feel a little bit at ease. So um, inside the American Job Center, we have a few departments within. Um, first of all, we have, um, well, we also provide the job seeking assistance. We can do that through the Lizalaw program or we can do it from the American um, the, Mar the Maryland Workforce Exchange. Uh, we have training opportunities, GED information, um, resume assistance, veteran services, interviewing tips. We have the federal bonding program, jobs fair, and like I said, the Lisboa Training Scholarship Program. So we have all that within the partnership within the American Job Center. And of course, I'm not following this, and I will follow this in a few seconds, but I just want to get you the understanding of what the American Job Center has to offer and how you can apply it to your services. Um, like I said, we have Department of Labor, Department of Social Services. Uh, we have Doors, Telemon, Short Transit, and also we have a computer resource lab that's um, assistance with Warwick. Unemployment insurance, you can go there to apply or get assistance if need to, but you know, of course we not the um, unemployment office, but if you come in and you have questions, uh, the Maryland Workforce Exchange is there to assist <coughs> with that. We have Job Corps, uh, which is not actually there, but there's a phone call away. If you have students who are interested in participating in that program, um, there is a direct line with them to get that help for them. Um, we have the GED programs, and um, like I said, these are not in-house, but these are the services that we can provide by giving you the information to utilize and go to any adult education program that you may see fit. Um, then we have Max Center and the Shore Up. These are our partnerships that we have together. So before I even start talking about business, I just want to talk about, just for a few minutes, um, the apprenticeships that we also offer. We, um, you have to do um, application and there's a criteria for you to go within our program. But we have welding, the CNA program, the CDLs, 
um, and HVAC. So if you or anybody else are interested in getting those type of trainings, um, look within us, go to us, because we offer some of those scholarship money for that, those specific trainings to go to specific um, organizations that sponsor that program. Okay? Like for instance, CDLs, if you're interested in the CDL program, you can go to Warwick. So I'm just letting you know that um, the money is available. You know, we have to have a criteria to do that, but it's available to supply if you know anybody who's interested. Um, so now I'm gonna go into Bob's. Good luck to me on this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna talk about the business services um, at the American Job Center. And um, as of yesterday, I don't know if you ever drove down Route 50 and saw that sign that says uh, hot dust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, people always call and said, what's the hot dog? Hot dog. I'm like, what is hot dog? So I think because they're driving so fast, they don't see the, all the words. But anyway, that sign is removed and we finally got our sign up, thank goodness. And it's right there called business services. So when you're looking for business services within our agency we are inside that on the side of the american job center like off of route 50. okay so what we do for the business services and what we can do we are growing we are completely expanding we are getting an, another six more people or five more people in our business rep department uh, we brought on a lot more tasks for the new services department. We're expanding with the Riola program. We are just expanding all kinds of ways. So um, these are the services that I hope that you can look within us to, um, to work with us with. We host recruiting events. So if you have a, a recruiting event that you need help with or you're trying to get it up and running, we can assist with that. I don't know specifically what we all can do, but I'm sure we can cover, accommodate as much as you possibly need for us. Um, we do candidate screening and assessment test services. So what that means is that if you have some employees, I mean, employers or employees that needs to be tested uh, for their, you know, their job seeking skills or their interviewing skills, we have those assessment tests that are available um, to give you some feedback. And what I want to also throw in, uh, we have a, we have been having it for at least a year. We have the metrics learning, which is our level up skill learning path. What that is, is that if you're interested or anyone is interested in taking classes for free, you only have to do 50 or five, no, five hours of workshop online, and it opens it up to 500 career paths for someone. So if they're interested in getting a certification in, uh, I guess, WordPress or IT <coughs> Google, this is available for someone for free. So um, we can assign those things as a group to different agencies within your organization, or someone else can do it individually. Those things are available instead of just going to, you know, at times, you know, um, Indeed and getting their assessments through them. We have that available for all of you for free. Just, <coughs> you can contact Bob for that one. Um, so the work-based learning reimbursement program, I'm not too sure about that really. I don't know how he has that worded a little bit, but we are partnership programs that we do have and we do have to offer. We do give them, we, we have allowed to give a partnership with them to give them money for their apprenticeship programs. So when the kids are coming in, they're not coming in just doing the work. They are going to get a, a stipend for their job work. So I am sure, I'm assuming that is what that entails. They're just not out there for free. Okay. So the recruiting events that we have um, for the general job fairs, and we're open to everyone or and to all companies. Um, inside the business services, we're going to focus right now on hospitality and healthcare, and hopefully move it into solar winds, um, maybe in the new future. But that is what that is the direction that we're going in serving the customers here on the Eastern Shore. Um, the positions that we really are trying to focus because we're lacking in that 
um, is plumbing and welders and nursing. So CNA, RN, LPN, I believe, maybe. Um, we're gonna have some of those programs that we're just really trying to get more people involved in those type of sections in their career. Um, also, we're gonna focus on employment focus with individual companies. So if they have a company that's needing some assistance by hiring one particular person, we, whoa, I didn't think I was gonna be able to do that, okay. So, okay, so, okay, so what are we gonna do? I'm trying to go back, okay. Okay, you can call Bob for those things, but yes, um, we're gonna have that available for everyone, okay. And next one up, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. So we did talk about <coughs> testing um, and computer um, <coughs> that we can help with employment issues or just seeing their, their level of education. We have that inside of our system as well. We have that available. And let me, let me go to, I'm going to fail on this. Um, and this is what I just I wrapped up with this program, with the on-job training program as part of the apprenticeship. Um, so like I said, the kids will go out or uh, the adults and we'll be able to give them a stipend for their type of work that they're doing. So they're getting some type of a check. And at the end, I'm done. <laughs> I want to try Very good. Perfect time. Natasha Douglas with Goodwill Industries of the Chesapeake. She's the Director of Participant Services. Director of Participant Services with Goodwill Industries of the Chesapeake. And today I will be covering our training programs and services. So some of the things that I am gonna to cover today is just basically a little bit of backstory about the company, the programs and services that Goodwill offers, our job placement options, the support services that we provide, and just some registration information. So to start off, I wanna share Goodwill's mission. And our mission is that Goodwill Industries of the Chesapeake prepares people to secure and retain employment and build successful independent lives. So to give you a little bit of backstory about the company, we were founded in 1919 by Methodist of Pastor John German. And we operate in Baltimore City in 13 counties. So we start at the Maryland-Delaware line on 95 North, come through Central Maryland, and over into the Eastern Shore. We have 29 retail stores and one outlet center, four career centers, with one being in Salisbury, two early Head Start centers, and we also have four contract locations, which are the State Office Building, Fort Meade, Social Security Administration, and the National Coast Guard. So just to give you some information about Goodwill and how we operate, so we accept the donations from the public. And with those donations, they are <coughs> sold at the stores. Items that are not sold at the stores are salvaged and sent for recycling. And the revenue that is generated from the sales supports all of our training programs to allow persons to attend for free. And those graduates of the training programs, we work to promote for employment opportunities. So it's basically what we call our circle of hope. So as a part of our programs and services, there are four 
of subcomponents, job readiness, skills training, job placement, and support services. So our job readiness courses help individuals who have little to no work experience, may be looking to change their careers, may have been out of the workforce for quite some time and wanting to re-enter, or they just uh, maybe want to freshen up because it's been a while since they actually had to conduct the job search. So we focus on navigating the workforce, but also entailing some computer and digital literacy so that we can per help persons with their digital job searches, resume development, interviewing assistance, and of course, networking, in which we focus on primarily LinkedIn. For our skills training, we like to incorporate credentials. And we've heard a lot today about the importance of having certifications or credentials. And so on our training menu, all of our credential trainings are at a national or state level. And they are provided for a service delivery format in which there is either a virtual facilitator, online self-paced, or hybrid blended learning approach. And all of the certifications offer a hard copy certification, but some may also offer a digital badge, which can be connected to your LinkedIn account. So first I wanna talk about our partnership with the National Retail Federation. We operate two courses with them. The first one is customer sales and service. So with the customer sales and services, it's pretty much an intermediate level, which focuses on, of course, product knowledge, customer needs, company brand. And this course takes about 15 learning hours. Individuals can take it with a facilitator, but they also have the option of taking it online and self-paced. And you will do your exam after, or after you complete all the modules and you usually receive your certification within 24 hours of completion. <laughs> For those that are looking to advance in the business of retail, there's a retail management course, and that goes a little bit further into selling and service, human resources, operational management, fiscal management. Once again, there is a certification exam at the end, this course equates to being about 20 hours. It does offer the opportunity to use a facilitator or if a person wants to navigate the course independently online and at their own pace. With both of the options with the National Retail Federation, they, are, they do have the opportunity to have access to professional webinars and seminars and leadership opportunities, but also their job board. The National Retail Federation is connected with about 50 different organizations throughout the US that work with them to provide their talent pipeline. So what the National Retail Federation does is track your zip code to inform you of job opportunities that are in the area. Pharmacy technician training is one of our most popular training on our skills training menu. We've operated this training since 2018. And so with the pharmacy technician training, we work in conjunction with CVS and a community college to offer the curriculum. It's a total of 16 weeks. The initial 12 weeks, persons take pharmacy calculations, pharmacy theory, and CPR. The remaining four, the individual reports to a CVS location to do 160 hours of clinicals on site. So primarily people work on Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 5 p.m. schedule. And to enter this course, you do require a high school diploma or GED, COVID-19 vaccination, no criminal background, and medical screening, 
and also an educational assessment that's looking for you to score at a ninth grade level for reading, math, and language. For individuals that may not meet the score during their initial testing phase, we do offer TAG remedial instruction to allow the individuals to work to learn some of the content and bring their scores up and retest again. Now we're gonna talk about some courses that are primarily <coughs> online and self-paced. We partner with Meta to offer a social media marketing certification program for persons that are interested in creating an online presence or branding their organization with managing ads on Facebook or Instagram, this may be a program of interest for you. And so there are six course modules and a capstone project that is also entailed, which requires individuals to develop an ad, upload it to Facebook or Instagram, and the meta team reviews it before you take your final certification exam. This course primarily takes on an average of six months. It's a probably our most extensive course <laughs> that we have on our menu, but it has yielded the highest earning wage for our graduates. And so we have one graduate that was actually able to start the course and before he finished, um, obtain employment with the state of Maryland in their, depart uh, their Department of Communications. We also offer Department of Transportation Flagger. So the, the Flagger uh, course takes approximately four hours to complete. This can be done in one day. And it does require a driver's license. And we also have the Serve Safe Food Handler course, which takes about three hours and is a certification from the National Restaurant Association. So just talking about job placement opportunities, we like to partner with area businesses to offer uh, hiring events, employer linkages, um, employment re retention services. And we operate our own career services department, but we also um, operate a staffing service agency, which provides temporary, temp to perm, and direct hire options. And lastly, we do have case managers on site to assist our students with support services and resources to referrals. And if you're looking for registration information, it's listed here on this page.
Um, and new training programs are coming available all the time. So if you want to make that connection with one of the organizations, they can also work with you. And if you have enough people, things like that. So that's where this all came from. Um, so kind of think outside the box a little bit to not just a specific role, but maybe someone else that comes onto your organization or like I said, maybe it's just a little bit down, a little lower on the level that has that potential and you see that potential, you can have them grow. And you have that opportunity. Our business owners in this community and throughout the county are fabulous. We, we just live in the best place. So we know that, but we're getting that word out there more and more. So again, thank you all and I'm gonna turn it over. Thank you. Um, I brought brownies made by the students. So, hey, you Steve, would you mind? Somebody pass the, that bowl of brownies around because I am not allowed to get about it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm Carrie Cleaver from the Maryland Food Bank, and I'm here to talk about our workforce development program called Food Work. And so a goal, a mi the main mission of the Maryland Food Bank is to build pathways out of hunger. And so this workforce development training program is one of those pathways out of hunger. Um, I have some market data from the Lower Shore Workforce Alliance that talks about cooks, chefs, head cooks have the largest gap in skilled uh, workers among the food service organizations. So obviously the market is um, looking for our students. But I want to talk about what we're doing with our students. So we are really building this culinary employment pipeline, right? We have, this is a professional culinary training. Students are with us 420 hours and more than half of those are in the kitchen laboratory. Students graduate with a certification from an organization called Ruby.com. This is their online training. And so they are uh, doing Culinary Foundations 1, Culinary Foundations 2. They also lead with Serve Safe Food Handlers. And at the end of the program, they take and pass Serve Safe Managers course. So when they leave our 12-week program, this is what they're leaving with. That's my picture for the pipeline. <laughs> Um, we also have career development training, much like the job readiness training at Goodwill, I, I would imagine. And so what we're doing in the career development piece of it is digital literacy, smart goal setting and planning, financial literacy. Um, Bank of America comes and gives classes to our students on um, uh, fiscal responsibility. Uh, mock employment interviews. We do a field trip to the Entrepreneur Center in Salisbury. Um, and uh, resume writing, cover letter writing, reference pages, <laughs> and support with job search and job placement. Skip many. Okay. <laughs> this is a photo of us at the uh, Salisbury University's Dave and Patsy Rommel. Center for Entrepreneurship, and um, <coughs> students loved it. Almost everybody comes to us, they want to own their own food truck. <coughs> that's their goal, right? So let's go figure out what that's going to take. We have an excellent partnership with Warwick Community College. Yay! <laughs> They're in the back. <laughs> right? So we have our classes held in the classrooms, computer labs, and the kitchen, their state of the art kitchen lab. Retory, um, up on the third floor there. And so um, we've got our, our training there from 9.30 to 5. We are, we're a full-time program. So they come Monday through Friday. Our students come to us. And they're coming for 12 weeks. And so when someone has come to a program for 12 weeks every day, you know they're ready to come to work. Um, FoodWorks employs a chef trainer, a case manager, and myself as the workforce development manager. We're all based um, out of the Eastern Shore, out of Warwick, um, or in the Salisbury office at the Maryland Food Bank. This is just a quote, a quote from an awesome young man who, start, who finished our program the first time. Oops. 
the materials that the students receive. They get that in uniform, pressed uh, chef whites and pants every every day, um, and then they get tools, right? Their 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 hats, their slip resistant chef shoes, um, their uh, pocket thermometers, any school supplies. We also offer um, a transportation stipend. So when students mostly students are driving, um, coming to us, we don't have a great bus. Um, ridership of, amongst our students. Um, and so they're generally getting a gas car to help them with their expenses to get to school. We've also been able to help them with a, a very small stipend to help them with any expenses. For example, one student last term, uh, last class, she used her $100 a week to supplement the childcare um, that she was gonna have to pay in order to come to class. Um, and then we also have Chromebooks and the students borrow them for the duration of the program. My students, and then I might be under my time, I don't know, but <laughs> I wanna take any questions. I want to say there are some ways for employers to get involved, right? So. I know a lot of people do shut down for the season, right? <laughs> Maybe you want to keep uh, an employee from, from one place, to, from one season to the next season, and maybe sending them through the Food Works program might be a good way to do that. We have a, a class that starts in January. Um, join my Employment Advisory Council, which I'll be starting up in the new year. Um, keep us up to date on new trends in the industry and what your wants and needs are. Or come and be a cooking contest judge. We have Wayne's Wars today at 3.30. <laughs> um, join us for a mock interview session. Um, Sydney from Ocean Downs comes every time we do our mock interviews. Um, host a field trip, come and serve as a guest chef. Um, those are ways that you can become involved, and I just wanted to hear from you, if I have any minutes left, or minutes left, um, what else should we be doing in order to prepare workers for the workplace? You have three and a half minutes. Anybody? Let's get started. Drive safely. Carry on. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> you mentioned it, but did you mention that your program is free? Absolutely 100% free to the students. Not only is it free to them, but as, as I said, they get the transportation stipend and a small um, stipend for coming to class based on their attendance. Um, thank you, Susan. Yes. Their program has been phenomenal. This is the second time I've been a part of it, and every time I'm going, I'm even more impressed. So thank you. We have an impressive group of students, and this, we are in our third class. Ooh, it's hot up here. We're in our third class. <laughs> And this is by far the best class. The sad part is we started with 14 students. We're down to six. However, some of them are coming back. Um, and you, you, we're a low barrier, come on in, right? We do an interview, uh, we have an online application, and we interview the students, and then they come to an information session. And so if we've gone through all of that, you're welcome to our program. It's if you stay, are you ready to go into the workplace? And some folks aren't ready the first time they come through, or other things get in the way. A car breaks down, childcare is no longer available, et cetera. So um, I've got a few of those folks coming back. Yes? How many um, students can you take at one cohort? We can probably fit about 12 comfortably in the kitchen. So I front loaded it with 14 this time. <laughs> Thinking I'd be with 12, but joke was on me. Yes. Do they actually make meals? While oh, there? yeah. So what do you do with that? They take them home. Okay. They take them home, or we call our friends in the back. Yes, or we with. get the email. There's food. Yeah. Yes. There's food. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's an opportunity to, you know, to now, sell them to the public and, will, and put some money back in your program. I will say um, this program has been in existence in Baltimore for um, over a decade, and they really transferred that into making meals for different school systems. Mm -hmm. We are brand new on the Eastern Shore, and so we're just kind of getting there. There's also awesome. not a big, huge... Um, 
industrial kitchen like there is in Baltimore for the food bank. But so far, um, the, all of all the locations, um, we've graduated over 400 students. Oh, one minute. Yeah. One minute. Anybody else? Yes. Do you use the Spirit Kitchen in downtown Berlin at the church by any chance? I do not know anything about that. We should talk. Okay. Um, so thank you for listening. My, I, I handed out um, flyers and my email is on the bottom of there. So feel free to call me, email me, and also please share this flyer on any social media so I can get a nice full class for January. <laughs> and we should have additional time at the end if anybody develops any more questions. Tell you why I have so little to tell you about workforce. <laughs> so the Maryland Department of Commerce is um, there for the purpose of economic development, which would be creating jobs, basically. And what uh, what we typically do is reach out to in, in two ways. One is to businesses to help them develop and create jobs, to offer assistance there. And the other is we work with uh, municipalities and counties, local governments, and help them with infrastructure. Uh, and the like. We also partner with real estate companies. So it's, it's much, uh, it's much more. We are targeted much towards businesses rather than individuals who, who need services. And so my job is to cover the departments uh, uh, to be a generalist for our department in the lower four counties. So I have these bottom three: West Park, Humco, Somerset. I also have Dorchester. I spend most of my time working with local governments and then reaching out to larger businesses like manufacturers, technology companies, I would go in there and say, what do you need? Uh, none of which we have in our department. <laughs> so we might have one or two, we're a small department. But my job is to connect these businesses with resources from everywhere, you know, from other state agencies as well as federal agencies, or if I know of a nonprofit, it's just to be able to say, hmm, you've got this challenge, here's a resource that might work, or there's a resource that might work. It's actually the same thing Melanie and her team do, only on a state level. So the first place you go, obviously, is the local level because they have fewer people to worry about and they have a definite interest in, in you developing. But I also work very closely with them and we try to cover as many businesses as we can. So that's what we do. For workforce development, we do have a program, but our program follows a company rather than a worker. So what you heard from with, um, with people uh, prior to me is mostly where a worker can reach out and get help to be trained to elevate themselves in their skill set or their capabilities to perform a job. What we have is a program called Partnership for Workforce Quality, or PWQ, and it, it goes to the, the employer. It's for an employer for incumbent workers. So rather than us providing services for people that need to find a job or get employed, what we're doing is looking at those that are employed through a company and saying, do you have a training project? So most of our, most of our companies are manufacturers, technology sectors, warehousing and distribution, pharmaceuticals, things like that. And they have to get, take advantage of that project, they need at least 10 employees and $20,000 worth of training. And then what, ours, what we do is, is reimburse qualified projects 50%. So just give you a quick example of, uh, you know, if, um, uh, a manufacturer like in Salisbury, I, I won't say the name, but even though it is public information, but maybe they bought a new piece of equipment and they were gonna train five people on this, uh, this particular equipment and they're also opening up a new shift so they're gonna move new people on existing equipment in this expansion. And so they're gonna to have to train about 15 people on various skill sets in order to accomplish that. We could say, give us a list of everything you're doing, then we review it and they might say, this is gonna cost us $30,000 to pay for all the training. And we'd say, okay, we'll, you pay that and then we'll write you a check for half of it. So that's our program. And if, if you have any questions about that, um, you can let me know and I can get into it. We work very, very closely with Warwick. They provide a lot of the training that is offered to companies that need training skills. 
Um, sometimes it's provided by the vendor that sells the equipment. All of this is, is just details that I can give you if you really have an interest. Um, but the other thing I wanted to tell you is that if you are a business and you need assistance or you're you know, uh, about to expand or you don't know how to handle a certain thing, I'd be glad to meet with you with Melanie and her team and brainstorm what kind of resources might be available to you that maybe you don't know about, whether it's workforce or it's financing or it's uh, process improvement, any kind of thing like that. Um, and I, I'm just going to close by saying this, the greatest, uh, we also look at the economy for the state and say, what's the biggest need? Where's the biggest barrier? And it, it's no doubt that our biggest barrier is everybody in the nation's biggest barrier, and that is we don't have enough workers. Mm -hmm. So what I encourage companies to do is, is to ask themselves why. Why with such low unemployment do we not have workers? And we know what the answer is. And the answer is that when we went through COVID, people figured out how that working from home, uh, well, let me just put it this way. Many people will sacrifice compensation for more flexibility. So rather than running after the money the way they used to, they're saying, hey, you know, maybe I don't need that much money. Childcare is really expensive and so is a second car. And, I'm going to make less money and have more flexibility. That is not going to change. It's not going to ever go back, right? We probably went too far the other way. And just so you know, the eight hour work week, 40 hours a week was invented by Henry Ford. That's how old it is. Um, and we all just kept doing it, you know? And then we said, well, maybe two weeks vacation. Um, and so it's not, and, and, and COVID just kind of blew up. So these successful companies, I just want to give this little insight, the, real, the, the companies that are making it happen now are the companies that are getting people together in their executive staff and even from their uh, workers and coming up with new ideas. It's just like, okay, how does a manufacturer who has to have people there to make this stuff work on flexibility? How did Dunkin' Donuts do it? Anybody know? That's the big story of the day. People are tired of hearing me say it. Dunkin' Donuts raised their prices, their, their um, wages, from minimum wage to $17 an hour. Starbucks competed with them and said, not only $17, we'll give you tuition reimbursement. At Dunkin' Donuts! Think of where you were three years ago. Did you ever think when you grew up for Dunkin' Donuts that that employee would be making $17 an hour? Guess what? Their retention is up, their employees are happy. You go to the drive-thru now and they're, hey, how are you doing out there? They're not, what? You know, they <laughs> walking off the job. So I just want to throw that out there as, a, as something that we're talking to companies about more and more. We don't have the answers. The answers will come from the industry. They're going to come from smart people in the industry that say, I'm going to figure out how to move in this direction. I'm going to meet the needs of the workers to get workers. Maybe it's more workers. Maybe it's more pay. I will tell you that Duncan Donuts would have said there's no way they could have survived that kind of increase four years ago. And they, they made it work. I mean, I'm not saying that's the answer. I'm just saying that was their innovative path with their model. So um, if there's any interest in pulling people together, like especially in my region, I'm just starting to talk about this because I think we'll do it next year, to talk about innovative ways to work around the needs of the potential workforce. Um, I'm interested in getting some really smart people together that are creative that might have um, ideas. Okay, that's all I've got to say. You're going to have my contact information um, if you ever need, um, you know, if you ever need, I, I basically just refer you to all the other wonderful assets we have. <laughs> but I'm really smart about doing a lot of little things, but not very smart about all this. Excuse me. A lot about one thing. So I'm going to go Next, we have Christina Toadvine. She's the Director of Continuing Education and Workforce Development Partnerships with Warwick Community College. Welcome, Christina. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Christina Tovine. I'm the uh, Director of Continuing Education uh, Partnerships. I've been at Warwick for about 22 years. I represent the Continuing Education and Workforce Development Division. Previous to this new role, I was working um, with companies and businesses like yourself um, with computer and technology training. Um, and I have several of my colleagues here today, credit and non-credit um, programs. So we are happy to talk with you afterwards about any of these things, but I'm gonna get going. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on all of my programs, but I'm gonna list because I find that there's so many people that still don't know what Warwick does, particularly in continuing education and workforce development, it's like a hidden gem um, in our communities. Uh, but what I wanted to talk with you today was how we can help your businesses get the workforce you need because we know that there are extreme shortages, um, there's talent that needs skills, um, so you need to also retain and upskill your employees. And I also wanna talk about the partnership that we want you to join with us that we can connect you to resources that we have available, get your experience, use your experience, your talent, your input, your ideals for new programs at Warwick. So just real quick, uh, Warwick did open in 1975. We enrolled over 6,000 students um, in classes each year. We have uh, close to 4,000 credit students and close to 3,000 non-credit students at the college headcount um, per year. Uh, over 100 degrees and certifications uh, many classes are offered day, evening, and online. And like Mindy said, we had to look and reinvent how we at Warwick uh, met the needs of our uh, of our workers, especially during COVID. There was a lot that happened. We had to we went online for most many of our programs, and now we do a lot of hybrid programming. We're taking a look um, at our credit divisions and kind of re-looking, retooling some of the way that we offer programs moving forward into the future. Uh, so we really hear that, and we're uh, we're adapting. Um, to those students um, and the new reality, the new normal. So how can we help you guys, the workforce? Um, and workforce training, um, you know, everybody in the college uh, works with businesses and industry. Uh, continuing education workforce development is where I, ha where I, where, you know, I'm gonna, this is gonna be coming from a lot, but everybody. But Warwick is such a gem. We, we are um, your community college. How many people here have had somebody go through a work, workforce training or a student or an employee that has come through our credit department? How many people have we touched here? Okay, so we've touched a lot of people just in this room. Um, students um, start um, as early as juniors and seniors in our dual enrollment program. Um, we can give high school articulated credits to students going through CTE programs in our communities. Uh, you can complete an associate's degree, you can transfer and have a transferred associate's degree uh, right into one of our local colleges, UMES, Salisbury University, or beyond. Um, also, uh, we have um, certificate options, both in credit and in our continuing education and workforce development, licensure, certification, national credentials. Uh, we work very closely with all of the agencies that you just talked to. In fact, we're privileged to work with all of these agencies because we all really are here uh, for the same purpose, and, and that is to help you, the employers, and to train local people for local jobs, which is Warwick's um, mission. Um, through continuing education and workforce development, we have plenty of courses, short courses, uh, longer um, industry-specific courses, apprenticeships, um, programs that we run through grant um, for students to come in and take free training um, and get right into an um, entry-level position. Um, and Warwick has now, um, over the last few years, developed a seven um, pathway, a learning pathway, seven learning pathways, and that applies for all of our programs of study, whether it is credit or non-credit. And you can see that there's STEM, business and hospitality, humanities and social services, healthcare, public safety, education, human services, and skilled trades and transportation. And I have some of the pathway brochures up on the table. But really quickly, just going through, and I'm not gonna talk about each of these programs because I won't, I won't have the time, but here are some of the STEM degree programs that we have at Warwick. And of course, your biology, your chemistry, your engineering, your math, your computer studies, that's where your information technology uh, programs and certificates are. Cybersecurity is popular. Um, and our business and hospitality, um, and, and that is a big, a big thing on, in Worcester County, isn't it? Business and hospitality. So we have our business management, our professional license <coughs> studies. So if someone's out working um, in our community and they don't have a degree, but they have business credentialed licenses, they can apply that and get credits to Warwick towards an associates. 
Um, our social media specialist uh, program is fairly uh, new, actually, business transfer. We have the hotel motel restaurant management. And again, I am lucky enough that when I was in the computer training uh, director at the college, we were on the third floor right across from the state-of-the-art kitchen. So we, you know, we had bread cooking and I had classes. Uh, with you know you you guys would come up to the campus to have a contract training and it was just a wonderful experience on the third floor of Fault Millen Hall so it's 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 a great place to work and we do good things culinary arts and then in our non credit career starters area uh, for business we do real estate bartending and mixology um, pool spa operator and then of course you've already heard about the food works program that we partner with the American Food Bank um, business and technology career training. Um, these are the types of things that we offer to your businesses. So if you have employees, your support staff level, your administrators, and they need um, information on accounting, QuickBooks, Microsoft, uh, 365, whether that be Word or Excel, we can come um, and do training for you or you can take some of our open enrollment courses um, at the college. We have social media, nonprofit, you name it. So the other pathway we have, humanities and social sciences, I kind of, um, covers our general studies, our communications, our Englishes. Healthcare is a really big need right now. And we train employers, we train your future workers uh, for emergency medical services. Um, we actually um, uh, do EMT training and have a, a, an ambulance, a back of an ambulance in one of our labs. Occupational therapy assistance, physical therapy, radiology technology, nursing, your LPNs, um, transferring to four year college to become RNs. Um, certified nursing assistant, shortage, a big shortage right now. And we are here training the employees um, to go right into the hospitals. We, will, we work in close partnerships with our, our healthcare um, facilities, um, hospitals, um, and businesses so that we can um, do clinicals and get those students into your workforce. Uh, medical coding and building, phlebotomy, fitness trainer. We have classes even for veterinary assistants. Um, public safety, uh, we do degrees in criminal justice, forensics, uh, certificate programs, uh, corrections, <coughs> um, law enforcement technology, and we are the home of the Eastern Shore Criminal Justice Academy. So we uh, train all of the local law enforcement agencies. They come through and seasonal uh, part-time Ocean City um, employees. Education and human services. So if you, uh, childcare, Everybody, every single one of your employees may need childcare services. Uh, so we do train those child care workers, elementary education, special education, secondary education, transfers into our four-year uh, uh, schools. Chemical dependency counseling is also uh, a very popular program at Warwick Community College. Skilled trades and transportation. Um, this is uh, a very big area of construction, manufacturing. These are hot jobs. These are ones that are in demand. Plumbing, um, electrical, HVAC, welding, uh, metal fabrication. In continuing education and workforce development, we work with our local American Job Center. We have earned State of Maryland grants. Students, eligible students can come in and take um, free training for our metal uh, manufacturing and uh, metal fab uh, course and our welding class. These are classes, uh, our metal fab is an evening, Monday through Thursday course. Our welding is a Monday through Friday, uh, all day long. These are six, 14, 17 week programs. They're very intensive and students come out with employers waiting at graduation to hire our, our employees. Almost 100% of our employees get hired on the spot um, and follow up um, through our urn welding um, and metal fabrication um, uh, trades and programs. It's, 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 it's great. Um, I went to the welding graduation just last month and it was just, it was just like, wow. And our, our, our valedictorian was a female. So talk about non-traditional genders and these types of occupations, it was great. She earned the most um, welding certifications um, that any of our other students have ever earned. Um, and every single employer in the area was wanting to hire her. Okay, one minute to go. Let me, oh, let me talk about real quick our new um, pro, oh, no, see this? That, that thing just kind of messes you, messes with your mind. That's true. That, totally messes you up. That. <laughs> Okay, so we have new things coming on board at Warwick. Um, we have a new Patricia Allen Guerrero Tech Center. It's coming, I think, summer 2023. Um, and we're really excited about this, pro this building. 
Um, and this building is going to include, let me show you an inside HVAC welding CDL simulation with two CDL simulators, two flex labs, maker space. Um, and it's, it's gonna be amazing. So please take a look at your emails. When we do a grand opening, we want you there, we want you to review this building. But we do support the shore. Uh, we have lots of new things coming on board. We have our payroll specialist certificate that's coming on board with our business management. We have a new financial services certificate. We have a new social media certificate. We have a new risk management and insurance certificate. Uh, we have line person apprenticeship training, HVAC training, and all these new things. But what I want to for you guys to know is that we can help your businesses, whether we can put your information on our job boards for our employers, uh, whether I can come and talk to you personally about how we can help upskill your workforce with contract training, um, <coughs> talk to us, and we want to make that connection with you at the college. So thank you. Okay, so Nancy is going to, to finish us up today. She's going to be our final speaker, but I wanted to say thank you to uh, the coast. Uh, Office of Tourism and Economic Development, especially Nancy, for putting this wor uh, workshop together. Thank you to all of the speakers um, who spoke to us today, and thanks for coming to Snow Hill. Um, it is lunchtime, so don't forget we've got quite a few uh, restaurants in town uh, where you can, can get lunch real quick afterwards. So thanks again, and uh, hand it over to Nancy. Thank you, Larissa, for doing this for us. We really appreciate it. I kind of put on the spot when I asked her to do it. I sent her an email. I'm like, you're my first pick, so I hope you don't put me down. <laughs> but um, you're tired of from me by now. Um, again, thank you all, and thank you, extra special thank you to all our presenters today because they really have taken a lot of time out of their schedules to be here. Um, some thrown in at the last second and not even <laughs> expecting to be here and did a great job this morning with us. So we will have a few minutes q and I know there's three items on the agenda that I wanted to talk about, but the biggest one that I really want to talk about, which is first and foremost in my line item, the Coastal Careers Job Board. Inside your bag, everybody should have a bag, whether it was on the chair, on the table, somewhere, might have slipped off onto the floor, underneath the table, I apologize about that. Um, there is a flyer for the employers. It has QR code on there, has some information. If anyone is able to, in Worcester County, to post jobs on our Coastal Careers Job Board. It's new, it's only a few months old. Our team have put it together even prior to my coming, and then, lucky me, when I joined the team, I was able to kind of take it over and then run with it. So, please utilize that. We do promote it heavily, mostly through all forms of social media, because we are targeting all different age levels and all age groups and demographics and all of that. Um, but it also has been on the radio, we've done promotions for it, um, <coughs> a, a, a wide facet of ways to get it out to the job seeker. Because of course, what goes a job board if you're not doing a job seeker. Uh, we've got flyers around, we've got them in libraries, we've got them in, in um, different areas that we think that some of the people are going that are looking for jobs. Um, so we're going to continue to do that. But we have a different flyer, of course, directed towards the job seeker. And it has a little different look to it and so forth. And it also has a QR code because we all know that many of the folks are just snapping on their phones and getting all the information they need to keep it readily available at their fingertips. Um, regional Workforce Partners, it's a group that we were fortunate enough to kind of migrate from the Ocean City Chamber of Commerce um, and kind of take it into a little bit different direction and make it a little bit more countywide. Um, it is a, a large group that is Warwick's participants, we have the Chamber's participants, we have several businesses that are participants, we have businesses throughout the county. Um, but just to give you an idea of what that group does is we listen to all the different folks that have had things come up and we have targeted a list of items that we're going to take time to work on. Unfortunately, there's no immediate quick fix. As much as we'd all love to see that, there are things that are in the works that are going to take some time, take a little planning. Um, one of the base things that we've been working on is data collection. So in the near future, you all probably will be tasked with filling out a survey, asking questions. Um, so we're going to try to do an in-depth mapping study, and it's going to be a tri-county approach with Somerset, Lycomico, and Worcester, since we all seem to face similar issues and challenges. 
um, but we are trying to do our best to mitigate these things for your business, workforce, of course, being the biggest one. Um, so we're, we are definitely working on things. We're working, we have things on our, on our radar like childcare, transportation, different facets of the workforce, and training, and all those different types of items. So um, if you have anything that you don't know if someone's working on it, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to share any information that we have available to you. Um, so I know it's going to be a quick time. I do want to really, I know there was um, one last item on the agenda that I was going to touch mm -hmm. on. Coastal Career and Coastal Career Internships. Um, we work very closely. We're very proud to work with our school system. Our public school system has been fabulous. We would love to increase that relationship and we're also doing other internships aside from what the school are doing. So if there's a different type of need that you have, um, let's talk. And um, I'll just kind of throw that out there. Just feel free to contact me as a business if you think you might need some workforce this, this season. In the off season, as we know that there are some around businesses, um, just let us know. And we're going to try to make connections in that regard as well. Um, so again, thank you all. And we have some prizes to give away. Did everybody get the business card in? Everybody got the card in? Oh,